Welcome to Enlightenment at the Movies, the film series where we review the films that have entertained us and look at where they may have enlightened us as well and why we love them. The film classic I want to review today is The Fellowship of the Ring, the first film in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. In The Fellowship, the future of civilization depends on the fate of the One Ring of the Dark Lord Sauron, which has been lost for centuries but powerful forces are relentless in their search for it. Destiny, though, has placed it in the hands of a young hobbit named Frodo Baggins who inherits the ring. He is tasked with the mission of destroying the ring in the fires of Mount Doom where it was forged. But mighty armies of evil are arrayed against him. So how can he hope to succeed in the face of such tremendous odds? It seems like an impossible task, one doomed to almost certain failure. And perhaps the only positive thing in his favor is that he doesn't embark on this suicide mission alone. Joining him on the journey are the wizard Gandalf, an elf bowman named Legolas, Gimli a dwarf, and the humans Boromir and their guide Strider. Rounding out their party are Frodo's three hobbit friends, Merry, Pippin, and Sam. Together, they form the Fellowship of the Ring. It's a spirited but motley crew and woefully undermanned to go up against the armies of evil. They set off on their mission, facing tremendous obstacles as they travel through mountains, forests, rivers, and plains, facing evil and danger at every turn in their quest to destroy the Ring. And right from the beginning, Failure looks imminent, as Boromir falls prey to the spell of the ring and tries to take it from Frodo. Already we see the alliance threatening to split apart, though Boromir will redeem himself during a terrible, fatal battle with orcs. But their internal problems are far from over. Gimli and Legolas are mortal enemies as dwarf and elf, and then the team loses its greatest asset when Gandalf is dragged by the Balrog into the fire pits of hell during the fight at the bridge of Khazad-dûm. So how can the team possibly overcome the loss of the wizard? What chance do they have to stand up to the terrible occult power of the Dark Lord without him? And how long can Frodo resist the hypnotic power of the ring which is slowly poisoning him? How long will it be before he is lost to the Dark Lord as well. The mission seems hopeless. The only possibility for success lies in the ability of each member of their fellowship to face and accept the darkness in themselves, to accept that they will succeed or fail together, to realize that the seductive power and danger of the ring is too great for any one of them to succeed alone. And that is exactly what they do, as we see the team pull together and fight as one. As we see Aragorn, Gandalf and the Elf Queen Galadriel all recognize the ring's corrupting power and pull back from its destructive rabbit hole of evil. As we see Sam become Frodo's rock, holding his companion together with unwavering courage. And in witnessing their fellowship come together, we experience a principle of unity and the oneness at the heart of everything. We see the members of the fellowship start out as nine individuals, each with their own fears, prejudices, and agendas. But by the end of the story, they have become united in their souls as well as their purpose. They have become one. We see this same dynamic in sports teams as well, the blending and subsuming of the individual needs into the goal of the team. The ideas that the members of the fellowship had at the beginning about what separated them no longer exist. They have realized their essential sameness in cause together. Their commitment to the truth and their cause has broken down the false walls 
they imagined existed between them before. They are no longer separated, but unified. We experience the same thing within ourselves on our spiritual journey as the different parts of our personalities begin to coalesce into a focused desire for peace and surrender to the deepest love. We feel an inner integration, a harmony of purpose. Like the fellowship, we're drawn away from the distractions and negativity that the dark forces and Sauron represent in the film and that the ego represents in modern life. We are drawn instead to the light of being. It's not that the old distracting messages and addictions of our ego cease to exist. It's just that we have withdrawn our fascination and reliance on them. We've grown more interested in a deeper, more fulfilling focus. A good friend of mine had an analogy for this. He likened the different parts of his personality to people on a bus. And he said that whatever part of his personality was running his psyche at any given moment was driving the bus. I believe this analogy remains true, even after a mature spiritual awakening. The different facets of our personalities don't cease to exist, but what changes is that no matter who is driving the bus, it's always pointed in the same direction, towards the deepest peace and truth. I'm Patrick Brumell, and it's been an honor to be your host for Enlightenment at the Movies reviews and looks at why we love Fellowship of the Ring.